Right, as as you probably heard, if 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 you've been following the news, although some of you I know only get your news from the Iran Book Show, and therefore uh, this will be news. But uh, over the weekend, Hezbollah launched a rocket uh, into uh, the Golan Heights uh, in in Israel. Golan Heights, an area that uh, was captured by Israel during the Six Day War uh, from Syria and was annexed uh, as part of Israel, so it, it is now formally a part of Israel. Um, is, is, uh, so uh, Hezbollah launched a rocket into, um, into the Golan Heights. Uh, the rocket landed in a soccer field um, in a Druze village, um, uh, and uh, 11, 11, children, uh, 11 children were killed uh, by it. Another, I think, 12 uh, in hospital, injured by it. Uh, you know, this is horrific, obviously, uh, and uh, Hezbollah immediately announced that it was not responsible for it. Uh, it they claimed that it was, uh, it was a missile that Israel launched and... Uh, and had uh, fallen there or part of the Iron Dome or something like that. An analysis of the actual material found on the ground in terms of the type of uh, explosives and the type of missile that it was shows that it's an Iranian-style missile that Hezbollah uses. It, and, and indeed, both American and Israeli intelligence have, have shown the exact track of the missile. They've identified the launch site They've identified the track and that it exploded inside this uh, Druze uh, village. So I thought I'd, I'd do a couple of things today. Uh, we'll talk about uh, the Druze quickly. We'll talk about uh, the um, we'll talk about Lebanon uh, and and uh, the situation in Lebanon, and then we'll make some, I guess, uh, some comments on uh, what is to be expected. Israel has. Responded that it will uh, it will respond uh, pretty pretty aggressively, uh, although I, I I don't really believe them, but uh, pretty aggressively, and uh, the Lebanese are preparing for major attack and everything. Although it uh, you know I'm a little skeptical about whether all of that is going to happen, but I thought I'd give you a little bit of a sense of uh, first of all who the Druze are because this was in a Druze village, and I, I'd be surprised if most Americans know or. Europeans for them, I don't know who the Jews are. And then, uh, and then uh, I thought we'd talk about um, the, uh, basically the, the, the border between Israel and Lebanon and, and what you could expect if there is an Israeli land attack into Lebanon, where, where that would go. So, so let's just start with, with the Jews. Uh, so this was a Jews village in the Golan Heights. The Jews are a Spin-off from Islam, going back to the I think 11th century, uh, they uh, they hold both uh, Muhammad, Jesus, and Moses as their prophets. Uh, but a, a lot of their religion, a lot of the details of religion, are kind of of secret. Indeed, most Jews don't know much about their religion. 80% of Jews don't know much about their religion. 20, they follow the 20% who are the anointed who actually know religious, the religion and, in a sense, tell them what to do from a religious perspective. Uh, there are about, I think, a million, uh, a million, million and a half Jews in the world. Uh, most of them are in, uh, in uh, Syria, and uh, most of them in Syria and Lebanon and Israel. Israel has about 150,000 Jews, most of them uh, in villages around Haifa and the Galilee. Uh, Israel also gained some additional uh, uh, Jews when they occupied the Golan Heights and annexed it. So the Jews in the Golan Heights uh, are part of Israel. They, they can apply for Israeli citizenship. Many of them do not. We can talk about that. But the Jews in the rest of Israel, in the Haifa area, in the Galilee, all Israeli citizens. Uh, the Jewish community is, is the only non-Jewish community that where basically all young men go into the army. So they serve in the Israeli military. They are quite patriotic when it comes to Israel. They are known as, as committed and courageous fighters. Uh, and um, and uh, yeah, and they, they've achieved some pretty 
senior positions within the Israeli military. They serve in the Israeli parliament. Uh, and and they, they're, they're integrated, at least at that level, in Israeli society. The Jews are very... Um, they're very tribal, so they're, they're, they're very, they live in, in their own villages. They, they don't intermarry with other religions. They, they don't, uh, even, even though they're Muslims, they consider themselves separate from the Sunnis and the Shiites, although they, they spun out from Shiite Islam, I think. Uh, they are, uh, so they are this independent sect. But in, to a large extent, politically, uh, economically, they are integrated into into uh, Israeli uh, into Israeli society. Uh, so uh, this uh, killing of of eleven children, I mean, literally children from the ages of two to twelve, uh, is really shaken up the Druze community and and Israel in general. Uh, Netanyahu, the prime minister, immediately uh, as soon as he got back to Israel, he was on a trip to to the U.S. Went up to the Jews' village and and uh, and 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 sat down with them as they mourned uh, these children, and of course committed to uh, to retaliating. Uh, we'll talk about retaliation in a minute, which is the whole concept is ridiculous. Um, I mean, in this in 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 the context of what we're talking about. Anyway, this this is considered a, a major escalation on the part of Hezbollah, uh, in, in spite of them denying having done it. It, it is a major escalation. And uh, everybody, everybody in the world is expecting Israel to basically launch a major military operation into Lebanon any minute now, in any, any time now. Uh, some are surprised that it hasn't already happened. Uh, so, so that's kind of where we are uh, in, terms of, uh, in terms of expectations. Uh, most airlines have uh, stopped uh, flying into Beirut. Uh, and uh, a number of countries have asked their citizens in Lebanon to evacuate, to evacuate from Lebanon, to leave Lebanon. So I thought what I'd do today, which is not very helpful, I guess, for those of you just listening audio, but I thought I'd put up a map, um, a map of Israel and Lebanon, or at least of the border area, just to give you a sense of... Um, of where things are, of, 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 of what's going on, and, and also to give you a sense of what Israel is likely to do if it decides on a ground operation um, and, and what it might do if it decides on a more, on a more all-out operation. I'll just say this, that um, you know, Israel has already signaled, signaled through diplomatic channels to the Lebanese and to Hezbollah and to everybody that it does not want a war, which is bizarre to me, right? That uh, they are quite happy in a sense, basically what they've said is they're quite happy in a sense for the tit for tat. And they will do a tat for Hezbollah's tit, killing 12 young children. Uh, not clear when and not clear how and not clear exactly what they would do, but they would do something, but they don't want escalation. I mean, I, I, I don't know. Every time this stuff like this happens, and the same thing happened with Iran when Iran launched all those missiles to Israel, and Israel did nothing. Personally, I just feel so angry and so pissed off, right? I mean, Hezbollah is in a state of war with Israel. It has constantly you know, sent missiles into Israel and try to kill Israelis. It does it every single day. It happened that one of the missiles actually killed some children. But it's trying to kill children every single day. If this doesn't justify wiping them out, I don't know what does. If this doesn't justify going into Lebanon with the full force and might of the Israeli military, and destroying Hezbollah's capability forever, I don't know what does. And of course, the real enemy is in Iran, and nobody's doing anything about Iran. Nothing. They they can continue. They uh, you know the Iranian president, the so-called moderate Iranian president, came on today and said, "Oh, if Israel does anything, we're all out war. We're going to escalate." As if anybody cares about. It. Yeah, of course we should escalate. Should have escalated months ago. 
I don't know what Israel's planning. I don't know what they're going to do. I don't know if they're going to use ground troops. We'll talk about application of ground troops in a minute. I don't know if they're going to use ground troops. Uh, um, I, I don't know if they're going to go into Lebanon. Oh, they're just going to bomb the hell out of, I, I don't know, Hezbollah infrastructure, which they've been doing for 10 months now, right? So I don't know what addition beyond that they're going to do. What, what exactly are they going to escalate here? Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm frustrated. You, you can hear that. Uh, but it, it's just infuriating. The, and, and the reason is, okay, so the reason I'm, I'm angry is the, is the injustice of it all. The injustice. The bad guys need to be punished. Evil needs to be punished. Evil needs to be crushed, eradicated. And as we saw October 7th, the more you appease evil, the more you, you tit for tat it, the more you play into their hands, it just, it just, it just postpones. It postpones the day in which they will decide, now is the day we're going to kill, rape, pillage, torture, and slaughter your people. If you don't take the initiative, if you don't use these opportunities, when the world is actually looking at this and saying, yeah, well, they have to do something about Hezbollah just to kill 12 kids. If you don't use that and destroy these evil bastards, then what, it, you know, I don't know. It, it, you know, Netanyahu promised to deal with Hezbollah in his speech at, the, at, at Congress. Well, here's his opportunity to live up to it. Live up to it. Let's see what he does. All right, here's the map. You can see uh, in the uh, bottom left, uh, you can see, let me see if I can get a marker. I might be able to get a yeah, can't get that marker once again. Let me get, let me get a, this is a blue mark. Oh, won't let me do this? What the hell? It worked, it worked a little bit ago. This one? All right, this one works. All right, this is Haifa. Huh? That's where I used to live. That's where my parents live. Um, here's the border. Here's the border with Lebanon. I'm going to draw the border with Lebanon. And you can see you know how well I guess you can't really see how close it is because we don't have really a scale here but this is the border with Lebanon everything to the south of this line to the down on your map is Israel uh, something like this it, 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 it uh, you know this is me drawing along the line that is that is the border All right uh, let me change this color whoops it won't let me change color okay so we just got one color this here where I drew an X that is Syria uh, the border between Lebanon and Syria is something like this, something like that. All right, it's, it's up here somewhere, right? This is sometimes you hear on the news the Baka Valley. The Baka Valley is over here in this area, right? That's the Baka Valley. Oh, you can, uh, let, me, let me do this. We're, we're going to move this map. Anyway, I want to show you Haifa, show you how close it is to the border. Uh, Hezbollah can easily reach Haifa with its missiles. You see uh, right uh, in, in, uh, in this area, this is a, a lot of industry. A lot of Israel's industrial base is in this area. Um, and again, all reachable, ref big refineries here, reachable from this border. So a lot of the air defense systems of Israel are going to be uh, to defend Haifa and to defend this industrial area. Uh, you can see the Sea of Galilee. On the right, right uh, bottom, you can see the Sea of Galilee. Um, now, if Israel decides to go into Lebanon, it'll probably try to push Hezbollah north of the Litani River. I've talked about the Litani River before, uh, but I thought I'd show it to you. This is approximately the Litani River uh, as it goes. This is, of course, the Mediterranean. It goes somewhere around here, right, and it, then it starts going north. And it goes to the, you know, somewhere eh, along the, you know, just on the ridge of the side of the Baca Valley or into the Baca Valley. Uh, so you can see uh, Israel will want to create that buffer zone between it, although in the northern part, very northern part of Israel, there's not, it wouldn't even be a big buffer zone there. But at least in a segment of it, it there would be a significant buffer zone. This is the area where the, the missile hit the... the, uh, the um, 
uh, Lebanese, Le uh, the, the, the Druze village. Let me show you where Beirut is, just so you get a sense of this. Um, that's, the, that's the border there. That is Beirut. So you can see uh, Beirut is further from the Lebanese-Israeli border than is Haifa. Haifa is, is closer to the border than is, than is Beirut. Right? Now, um, Beirut, up, up right at the top of the map, right, right there, uh, Beirut is... Um, Beirut is where Hezbollah is based. It's where its leadership sits. Nasrallah, the head of Hezbollah, sits there. Its, its main operational base, its main military bases are in Beirut. Uh, Israel supposedly has committed to the Lebanese that they will not attack Beirut and that they will not attack the Beirut airport. It just boggles the mind that they made this commitment ahead of time because they don't want to, quote, escalate. They don't want escalation. Uh, Sidon and Tower, you know, so anyway, a, a long, long time ago, um, I basically, you know, so a long, long time ago, I basically drove from Tel Aviv, uh, Haifa, up the coastal road, you see Tyre there, through Tyre, through Sidon, all the way to Beirut, and, and, and drove a Jeep all that way into Beirut. This was in 1982. Um, I've also traveled around, um, drove around southern parts of Lebanon, um, spent a few days traveling around southern parts of Lebanon. It's a beautiful country, by the way, beautiful, beautiful country. Um, and, uh, you know, there was a period where I knew every little military base, every home in which terrorists were hiding in, in this region, in southern Lebanon, all the way along the coast and in the Baka Valley, all the way to, to Beirut. But that was a long, long time ago. Somebody in Israel knows all that today. A bunch of people know all that today. Uh, and so, so the intelligence, I'm sure, is there. Um, so just thought I'd give you a little bit of a, 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 the geography. We talk about places. Uh, it's, it's nice to actually get a sense of what it's like. Um, but it, when they talk about the Litani River and Israel trying to push Hezbollah to the other side of the Litani River, you know, now you know. Now you know what they're talking about. And now you can see uh, what, is, what is actually being involved. If Israel does that, they will leave on a number of different routes out of northern Israel um, uh, into, uh, into this region. Uh, uh, and and uh, depending on where Hezbollah has its basis, they will, they will try to get them as far north as, uh, as possible. Um, all right, let me see any, any, I'm just looking. All right. Um, just, just looking to see if there were any questions on this. Um, just one other piece of history, which I think is important. Let me just, let me just put the map back up a, a second. All right. So in 1982, Israel basically uh, took the entire south of Lebanon and actually occupied all of Lebanon uh, up and up through Beirut with segments of the Baka Valley. And uh, so the whole area... I mean, Israel basically occupied um, something like all of that, right? All of that was occupied by Israel. Um, and that was in 1982. And then starting in 1983, Israel slowly retreated from that and slowly moved backwards until the, the late 1990s when Israel only had a, a segment of southern Lebanon it may, be, it may be something like, um, whoops, what did I just do? I didn't mean to do that. Uh, maybe something like, again, I can only use one color, unfortunately. Uh, maybe something like, um, you know, this area. Uh, they only had a, a segment of it. And then in 2000, Israel retreated from that. Now, taking Lebanon was an immense success. 
uh, going to Beirut, doing all that, destroying the PLO, um, and uh, and forcing the PLO to leave. Uh, well, Israel wanted to kill them all, but but what actually happened was Ronald Reagan saved them and got shipped them over to Tunisia, and uh, and and thus preserved the 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 military force of the Palestinian people in those days. Uh, that's for another time. But um, in 1983, while Israel was occupying this entire territory, Hezbollah, as a military force, was formed uh, by the Iranian intelligence working in Beirut. Now, Israel did not occupy all of Beirut. They occupied the southern and eastern side of Beirut. They did not occupy the west of Beirut. They did not occupy uh, the, 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 yeah, the western part or the northern part of Beirut. Hezbollah was formed in Beirut by Iranian intelligence during 1983, and the first acts of terrorism by Hezbollah were attacks on, uh, one attack on an Israeli uh, base, an Israeli headquarters, I think, in, um, in uh, Sidon, and, uh, and then once uh, they worked that out, that was a, a truck bomb. They then uh, used the same technique uh, to basically uh, destroy the American embassy in Beirut and then kill 244 Marines in their barracks uh, in Beirut. That caused the Americans to retreat completely from Lebanon. And that, uh, and that emboldened Hezbollah and the Iranians poured a lot of money into it uh, to establish themselves. And then they became... Uh, they began terrorizing Israel, uh, the Israeli troops that were occupying Lebanon. And you could argue that at least from their perspective, they drove the Israelis out of Lebanon. Even though Israel had no interest in occupying Lebanon and Israel was, was going to retreat anyway, from their perspective, uh, they drove Israel out of Lebanon. And that is basically the foundation of uh, kind of their confidence uh, and their confidence in in doing and in, in, in doing what uh, what uh, what they uh, what they do. They are confident that they can drive Israel. That if Israel occupies Lebanon, they can harass Israel and force them out again. Uh, so, uh, is, uh, the U.S. by the way did not retaliate at all for uh, for what happened uh, to its embassy and. Uh, then I retaliate at all with regard to uh, uh, its uh, the Marines that were killed and the embassy that was destroyed. Retaliation, tit for tat. It, America did not engage in that. It just ran away, ran away. And and Bin Laden cited that example many many times when he talked about America as a paper tiger. Uh, the uh, Let's see. Uh, so Hezbollah was formed out of that first invasion and out of, uh, of course, this is, Iran was relatively young as, a, as an Islamic republic. This is the days of Khomeini. They, that was just in 1979. So uh, 1979, this is 1983, just four years after. Hezbollah is one of the great successes of the Iranian regime. Hezbollah has then grown now to basically control Lebanon to have the strongest military force in Lebanon and to basically control Lebanon politically and militarily. So it's going to be interesting. Uh, Lebanon has a significant Druze population. I'm sure a significant proportion of that Druze population would love to go after Hezbollah. I'm sure Israel is in communication with them to see if they would help retaliate. Not clear they will. Christians in Lebanon are anti-Hezbollah. Even some of the Sunnis in Lebanon are not particularly sympathetic to Hezbollah. Uh, so Lebanon could easily devolve into civil war again. It's, it's very close to it anyway. Uh, so um, Israel now has to decide what it's going to do. It's been bombing Lebanon, Hezbollah bases in Lebanon, killing Hezbollah military leaders for uh, 10 months now. That has not deterred Hezbollah at all. It can bomb more. I'm, I'm not sure what that will do. I think Israel will take extraordinary precautions not to hurt civilians. So what more could they do? 
What more could they do? Uh, so short of a, a land invasion, uh, I'm not sure what serves as retaliation. Uh, so we might know tomorrow morning, we might know, probably know this week what Israel chose to do. Given what it did with Iran, not much, nothing really. I, I'm, I'm not too optimistic about the significance and the, the, the level of, of the Israeli response to what happened. But we will see. We'll, we'll keep track of this uh, during the week. And uh, in our news updates, I will keep you updated on, uh, on what's going on.